So where do we stand now? Is a deal out of reach? And what is the president's role in all of this? Well, let's bring in Democratic Senator Sherrod Brown from Ohio. He's a member of the Banking and Appropriations Committees, and we'll ask him about it. Senator Brown, how, how do the American people know who to believe? Is it really about abortion and Title X, or is it about that they want more spending cuts? Well, I, I, as a fellow Ohioan, I believe John Boehner. The problem is John Boehner's changing what he said. He wanted the original number that John Boehner wanted. Uh, the Democrats, President Obama, Speaker or, or Leader Reid, met that number exactly. Uh, then Boehner raised the number, and we close to met within a less than a billion dollars, met that number a second time. Now he's saying that we're not meeting their number. Of course we are. This is about a radical agenda. They have a ra they, it's, it's about politics. They've never liked Planned Parenthood, even though this isn't exactly about Planned Parenthood. It's about Title X in funding women's health. It's not abortion. They'd like you to think that. It's not, um, it, it's, it's not birth control or family planning. It's really about fundamental uh, health care for women. Three million women get their primary care in America from Planned Parenthood and in millions others uh, other women get it from other other groups like Planned Parenthood so, uh, so it really is it's an ideological thing aimed at, at women and I, I just don't get why the, I, I know John Boehner's in a tough position with his freshmen who want to shut the government down so he's got to do a lot of bobbing and weaving and dancing and that's really what's happened I, I almost feel sorry for the speaker I mean, he's from my state I know him known him for years I, yeah. I, he's in a tough place what is your bottom lines what will you not give him well we're not going to give up on the three million plus women who get their primary care um, in large part because of this funding. That's, that's at this point, no, no more. Not, that's not negotiable. That is so important. We're not going to let them shut the government down or we're not going to let them uh, play politics this way because of their radical agenda and, and cave in on it. We can't do that. It just doesn't make sense for, for all of those women. It doesn't make sense for our country. That figure of 78 to $79 billion, um, that's already been raised a couple of times when, when Speaker Boehner has gone back to his freshman. They've insisted it's gone up. We've even met that. I think we were, we shouldn't have gone that far. We did. I'm willing to support that, but no longer in our caucus, nor will other Democrats in our caucus go above that number. Boehner knows what the number is. He knows that we've compromised on the budget cuts. Um, and it's time that, that they voted, they, their caucus came forward and voted for this. So the question is, how do you guys get what you want? Because you want to get rid of the oil subsidies and the farm subsidies, and you have an overwhelming percentage of the American people behind you. But somehow we never get to that. We always have the Republican priorities, and we're always discussing how much we're going to agree with the Republicans. When do you ever get the progressive priorities? And I'm, it's a literal question. How? How do we get no, there? I, I, I'm fr we're all frustrated with that. I think a couple of things. And one is that, that um, the Republicans don't mind shutting the government down. I mean, you you know you you ran this with a story that when it was either Speaker Bain or somebody said something about a government shutdown and all the Republicans most of them jumped to their feet and cheered in the Republican conference in their meeting of the 200 or so House members. So we know that. But the but the thing we need to do is the president needs to step up after this is done. The government's now running for six months. People can do what they need to do, and the president needs to step up and lay this out that hey, we're going to do deficit reduction. We'll do more deficit reduction than they will do. But we're going to do it in part by the millionaire surtax and the closing the oil loopholes and cutting some of these subsidies that, that have gone to these, these huge corporate farms in Arkansas and in, in Texas and whatever. So that's, that's, but we need the president weighing in. Then I think he will. I think the debate gets expanded. And then the vote, then the Republicans are in a position that they're going to, they're going to, they're going to continue to do more tax, want to do more tax cuts and cut Medicare and go after Head Start and go after college student grants, the Pell Grants. I mean, I think they're going to be in such a bad position. Enough of them will cave to work with the Democrats to pass something in the House on the long term budget this coming this summer and fall. Last thing for you. Look, here's the thing, right? You guys, I get that you're at an institutional disadvantage. But here's what I mean by that. Because if the government shuts down, the military families don't get paid, right? And, uh, and you know, now uh, Jim McLeishevsky is reporting that if, God forbid, some of them die, that we're not even going to pay for their funeral services. You guys care about that. The Republicans don't seem to care about that. They're perfectly willing to shut the government down. How do you get beyond that institutional disadvantage where you guys care and they don't care? Well, I think you do it through presidential leadership and putting them in such a bad position that enough of them will care. I mean, there's a there's a slice of 
30, 40, 50, 60 of them that are such far right wing ideologues and so o obedient to their to their Tea Party and corporate masters that they they may not you may never get them. But you get enough Republicans with the Democrats once the presidents put them in a position, the, the conservative, the far right in a position that they've got to they've got to be more reasonable. And I think we win then. But I, I do think we can get to this budget this time in the next day or two. I hope still tonight, if not in the next day or two, get the government back open for the next six months, and and then 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 the real discussion in debate and battles begin. And I do think the president's going to lead on this now. I am confident of that. All right, looking forward to it. Sure, can't wait. All right, and then we, Senator then Brown, we can't thank wait. You. We can't wait to hear you sing then. So, <laughs> thanks. Okay, that, hey, that's a win for everybody. Oh, yeah, yeah.